Hi, this is Ibarian X from The Candid Frame. I recently got a comment on one of the videos that one of the big fallacies about street photography is that street photography is all about photographing people and that it's much more than that. And that's very true. Street photography isn't just about photographing people walking down the street or smoking a cigarette or being on their phones or kissing on a street corner. Street photography can and has been a lot about life on the street, but not necessarily about the people on the street. Sometimes the street itself is the character. And if there are people in the photographs, they are just graphic elements within the composition. Or sometimes there's no physical presence of people, but the suggestion of their presence is in the photographs. And I want to thank this listener for posting that message because I thought it was great food for thought. Though we can be influenced a lot by what we see on Flickr and Instagram with, in relationship to street photography, street photography is much more than just people as the primary subject. So I chose three images that I think really illustrate that idea. Here we have a shot by Jeff Shimmer. This was made with a Fuji X-Pro2 at 250th of a second, f8, ISO 200. Now, I really love this shot for a variety of different reasons. First off is the light. The quality of the light here is just phenomenal. Light, shadow, there's an abundance of shape and line, making this a very, very graphic shot. Uh, there's also obviously the color and the color contrast between uh, the reds, the blues, the greens, the whites, the, the purples. And this is a scene where we don't have any people. It's a street photograph, nevertheless. It's a beautiful street photograph for the way that it uses all of those elements that I just described in order to make a really interesting photograph of a place. And though some people would say, oh, you know, you need somebody, you know, on the right-hand uh, side of the frame walking into the frame, I think not. I think that this shot is more about this place and this setting more so than anything else. And what makes this such a strong shot is that it has all the elements that I think make a really good photograph. There's an attention to the quality of the light. Imagine this if the light was just evenly illuminating this entire scene or if it was a cloudy day where the light was completely even. Uh, you, would have, you wouldn't have this contrast between light and dark that uh, is all over the scene, especially here. You see this little separation of light and shadow here that complements this? That, for me, is really key here. And then you got some lovely reflected light here in the, in the alley. You have these dark tones, but you have these, this shape of this fence that's separated by little slivers of light. The light here is really key to making the shot work. And then we have this repetition of pattern we have repeating rectangles, squares, that pervade the shot in a variety of different ways. You have horizontal, you have vertical. Beautifully, and it's beautifully framed. And then, of course, the color. And spotting a scene like this can be a challenge if you're only fixated on people. You're walking by a bunch of garbage cans. Most people wouldn't even think of photographing those things. They go, why do you want to photograph a garbage can? But Jeff here speaks to the idea of not looking at the world literally. Looking at it in terms of light, shadow, shape, line, color. When you're looking at the world that way, when you're, look, when you're out in the street photographing, and you're looking at the world in that way, then you see the world completely differently. And you can make photographs that most people would never consider making, even other street photographers. Really love this shot. And that's a, uh, I want to give kudos to Jeff for even spotting this scene in the first place. All right, here's a shot by Keith Vaughton. Uh, this was made with a Fuji X100T at 640th of a second, f6.4, ISO 200. Now, though we have a human figure in this shot, this shot is not about the person. 
much like the previous image, this is about the scene itself. Again, the light, the shadow, the lines, the shapes, the color. All of those things here just play off of each other beautifully. I love how deep the shadows are here. Not just because I have an affinity for you know really dark shadows in, in, in a lot of my shots, but, bef but because it helps to emphasize line and shape. It helps to make accentuate the colors that do exist in this scene. And one of the things that I really like with respect to color is the muted tones that uh, he's working with here. I don't know to what extent these are the natural colors that were in the scene and how he may have accentuated them or desaturated them in post. It may be that this is the way he, he saw it or maybe treated, uh, treated it or processed it a little later in Photoshop or Lightroom, but whatever the reason, I really like what he's done here. But we do have the person here, right? We do have a figure. We get the nice splayed legs, which gives us a lovely triangle. It provides us a sense of scale with in relationship to that human figure with everything else. In the previous shot, I said that I don't mind not having the person in the shot. Here, I think it helps. And the reason I say that is because you have this large area of negative space. And this helps to break up what would otherwise be sort of dead space. This area here on the right has, has a lot of weight to it, as does this area here on the left-hand corner. And not having this figure here sort of imbalances the shot. And I think it provides it a really nice flow. And we get an implied triangle. Do you see it? Bam, 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 bam. These dark tones are basically the points of the triangle for me. And so it helps me to navigate the frame in a really beautiful way. Without the woman in that frame, I wouldn't have that. And I think in this particular frame, having the person there is really key for the effect for the shot to be effective. Now, it's not about the it's not about the woman though. It's not about the person walking in the scene. In this case, the woman is a graphic element. These are very graphic elements in the shot, as she is as well. Not only the splay of the legs, but the, the, her shadow, even the silhouette of her head and what looks to be like a, a cigarette or maybe a pen or something sticking out of her mouth. It makes the shot work. So sometimes you can take a photograph of a scene and you really have to evaluate it based on all the things that I talked about in terms of light and shadow, shape, line, etc. And you have to consider, does it need a person or can I get away without one? In this case, yes. In the other one, you can get away with it and it's just fine. All right, here we have a shot by Vasco Trancoso. Uh, we have no XF data here on this. This shot is really remarkable. I really love this shot. Now, in terms of light, it's really interesting because at first you can you can think that, oh, we don't have the kind of dramatic light that we had in the previous two shots. And with the scene that's right in front of the camera, the answer to that is yes. You're dealing with a very soft, diffused light in this scene because it's obviously cloudy because you can see that reflected in the light in the windows. But the light in the windows is much more dramatic, different. You have the blue of the sky, with the clouds, you have the gradation of light to gray in the clouds, and then you have the tree where you have that really dark shadow. You have that, you know, diagonal line that's cutting through the frame. So the light here is just you're dealing with two different qualities of light, one for, for the sky and one for the overall scene uh, of this trailer and this fence and this man walking through the frame. And then you have, obviously, the lines and the shapes, the squares, the rectangles, the horizontal line of the trailer itself, the vertical lines of the fence post, the roundness of the wheel. And all of those things play off of each other beautifully. And then when you add the color, oh man, the color just makes the shot. The bones of the shot are already really strong in terms of light, in terms of shape, in terms of line, but you add the color and all of a sudden it's just like, just fantastic. And this is a shot where you could have gotten a really nice frame. 
with just the trailer and the sky and the fence and been perfectly fine with that. But there's something that's added by having that, what I, I'm assuming is a ringmaster because of the coat that he's wearing, entering the frame or and about to leave the frame on the right. The shot is not about him. The, the focus is not him. It's the space. It's the place. That's the character. That's, that's the heart of the scene here. That's the reason why the photograph was taken. But this human element, well, that adds something that just complements the image beautifully. Not only do we get that sense of scale, yeah, we get that. But there's something about how he helps to play a role in this overall shot. And I think largely it's, it's his shape in there. Because you see everything else, except for maybe the lettering where it says Chen, is, is, is very straight, very rigid. And then his shape is more rounded, especially his head, his shoulder. And that kind of complements the wheel itself. And, and, the, and, the, and the wheel is, is red as well. And so you make that connection between him and the, and the top of the fence and the letters of the text itself. The scene in and of itself, without the human figure, is beautiful, but it's static. There's really no energy beyond what's provided by the, the color contrast. And the energy, a lot of that energy comes from the color contrast. But by having that human figure moving through the frame, it adds a certain amount of energy. And I kind of like the fact that he's walking out of the frame. That's typically something you want to avoid in a lot of photographs. They tell you, you, know, you never want someone walking out of the frame. But for me, that adds a visual tension that really, really works for me. And this is a shot where, yes, you could have gotten this shot without the person and it would have been a good shot. But by having the person, you make an even better photograph. Now, this is different from the second shot where the, the woman was really necessary to bring balance to the composition, right? It created that implied triangle. So you felt that image and it just needed that woman in order to sort of complete the frame. And in the first shot, you could completely do away with having any human figures in the frame, and it's fine. Here, you could live with it or live without it, but in my case, I really like that the human person, the person, is there. Because I think it adds a dynamic element, a dynamic element to the shot that really makes it sing. Hope you enjoyed that. I did. Uh, th and thanks to the, to the viewer for uh, making the comment. It really inspired me to really look through our photographs and try to find a little something different. And uh, if you've never heard of The Candid Frame before, The Candid Frame is a podcast in which I've been interviewing photographers for the last 11 years. And uh, we recently interviewed a photographer named Catherine Just, who's just amazing. She's known primarily for her self-portraits, but she does a lot more than that. But her self-portraits are just beautiful. They're haunting. And the interview is uh, really deep. I think you really are going to enjoy this conversation. So if you've never heard the show, I really recommend starting with this one. Uh, I think you'll, you'll get a lot out of it. And you can listen to it here on the YouTube channel, or you can go to the Candid Frame website at thecandidframe.com and uh, stream it from there. But what I recommend that you do is download the Candor Frame app, which is completely free, and it's available for all the major operating systems, and it allows you to easily download and save any of the interviews that we've done. And we have th over 387 conversations uh, that uh, you can enjoy at your leisure, so, so check them out. And if you want to contribute to the growing community here at the Candor Frame, you can go on Flickr, do a search on the Candid Frame, and just ask to be added, and I'll be glad to do that. Uh, again, uh, don't try to add using your tablet or your phone. You'll get a notification telling, telling you that is, this is a private group and you can't be added. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but if you just go to your computer and try to be added, you'll be put in the queue, and I'll approve you, and then you can start contributing images. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next time.